Okay, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here at the Network Breakfast. Once again, it's Tuesday morning, and we're going to tackle follow-up two. We started last week, but uh, this will be self-contained. So even if you missed last week, although you could go back and watch it, uh, follow-up one was uh, last week. That was the, uh, uh, the first episode of follow-up. And uh, but right now, we're, uh, I'm going to introduce each of our uh, our members here uh, who are going to participate in this, and I'm happy to do so. And we're going to say uh, first off, good morning to uh, Chris Walters. Good morning, Chris. Uh, good morning, Tom. Chris Walters with See Through Windows. I provide vinyl replacement <laughs> and new construction windows. Uh, we also do glass block. I cover a territory from uh, Port Clinton to the uh, Pennsylvania border, Cleveland to Canton. Uh, I go take a look at every property, and within 24 to 48 hours, um, I send out uh, email uh, for you guys, for you to look at. Uh, right now, uh, with the way that COVID thing's going, we're about uh, six to eight weeks out with uh, ordering the windows and then getting them installed. So uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Next, we're going to uh, uh, welcome uh, Judy Bollinger. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Judy. Uh, good morning, everybody. I, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to talk about my business, right? Yes. You, you led me in the beginning. I was confused. But anyway, I'm Judy Bollinger, and I am a freelance writer. Basically, I work on websites. I do um, rewriting of, of websites. I do any website content at all. And I also do blogging for websites. But in addition to websites, I do any kind of email marketing letters, anything that needs to be written, and newsletters, anything that needs to be written that um, you don't want to tackle. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, you don't want to tackle it. <laughs> but um, so that's, that's basically me. Excellent. Thank you, Judy. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to welcome to the microphone, Jeff Hexter. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Tom. Thank you. I'm Jeff Hexter with Always Keep Computing. I work with professionals <laughs> working from their homes uh, who are frustrated when their Wi-Fi is whiffy, their printers aren't printing, their emails aren't sending. Hmm. And I help them be more productive and secure online. And I have a situation that happened last week where I arrived at a client's home their complaint was that they couldn't get their machine to do anything. I took one look at it and I said, and where's the power supply to your laptop? They, <laughs> uh, the, the what? Really? They'd unpacked all their boxes and didn't realize they needed to plug their laptop in to charge the battery. So I flipped the machine over, looked at the model number. I've ordered the, the power supply online. I'm delivering it this Wednesday and setting their machine back up so they can actually use it. I come across <laughs> some weird fun problems, guys. It's funny. Yeah. Thanks. Hopefully, hopefully most of them are not that. <laughs> some of them are easy. Some of them aren't. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for being here, Jeff. I appreciate it. Uh, next, we're going to say good morning to uh, our friend Lee Jackson. Good morning, Lee. Good morning, Tom and everybody. My name is Lee Jackson. I'm currently with Jackson Consulting Services. Just wondering, do you happen to know any out-of-the-box thinkers, any innovators, any executives that are looking for new ways to generate revenue, generate business, and save on their expenses. At Jackson Consulting Services, those are the people I work with to help grow their business, and I work with them every day. But I'm slightly changing my course now, and instead of helping those people as an external consultant, I'm looking to transition myself to do the same thing from the inside. I'm looking to speak to people that will enable me to move forward in finding a full-time position, leveraging my leadership experience in healthcare and my network connections, particularly in the senior service industry. I'm looking to meet with owners, executive teams, leaders of those senior service organizations, and those who serve those leaders in those organizations. A conversation with bold thinkers and creative innovators, I'm confident will help them and will help me move forward in my goals and that business's goals. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Very well done. Uh, we're going to say good morning to Mike Bentley. Ask Mike. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, all. Uh, I am privileged to work for the Brooks and Stafford Company, an organization that has been around since 1849 
in assisting people with their insurance needs. My particular area of, of experience is in the health care, health insurance field. I work with benefit, uh, the benefit uh, side of group health. Uh, I work with Medicare beneficiaries all over the country. Uh, those who are looking to get short-term health care, they're in between jobs, and also assist those who are interested in Obamacare through the marketplace. So if you have a question or you have a family member or friend that has a question about the very confusing uh, subject of health care, ask Mike, give me a call. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Yes, ask Mike. We usually do. He's our go-to guy when it comes to all of that. Okay, now we're going to say good morning, even though we can't see him. He's there. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, everyone. Ray Antonelli here. Um, most of you know that I've been involved in, uh, in mortgages for the past 25 years. Got the gray hair to prove it. Um, I recently joined last November, a startup mortgage company here in Solon. So I don't have to travel very far to go to the office <clears throat> when I do go to the office. Um, I still specialize in reverse mortgages for seniors. Although of course I'm licensed to do any type of mortgage and rates are currently in the twos again. So, so anyone who needs uh, to refi or purchase a home uh, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help them. But again, reverse mortgages are my focus. Um, I teach classes on reverse mortgages at various locations around the county uh, every quarter. Um, and the, the, the item I wanted to pay particular attention today is a reverse mortgage for purchase. Um, if you have a senior that owns a big house uh, and is paid for, and they want to downsize to a condo, for example, because they don't want the maintenance hassles, they can actually sell that house for cash, take a portion of the cash, and use it as a down payment on a smaller home, and then use a reverse mortgage for the balance of the purchase and never have a payment again, thereby preserving most of the uh, funds from the sale of the larger home to use for retirement as well. Most realtors don't know this. So if you have anybody in that position, uh, that would be a, a really good referral as well. Thank you. Wow, very good. Uh, intricate stuff. And uh, only people like you know that. Maybe we could, we could use a, a, uh, a little more information about that. Maybe you could do a presentation on that. So we, at least we'd have it down, the explanation of all of that, what you just went through. Thank you for being here, Ray. Thank you for that. Next, I would be we're going to say, I'm sorry, go ahead. I would be happy to. Great. Thank you, Ray. And we're going to say good morning to uh, our tall friend, Rob Lord. Good morning, good Rob. Morning. Good morning. How is everybody? <clears throat> so I'm kind of a puzzle master. Uh, people have a, ooh, I'm getting fancy today. Puzzle master. Um, have you ever tried to put a puzzle together without seeing the picture on the box or you're missing some of the pieces? That's where I come in. I try to help you realize what that picture is for your financial future and your retirement and your goals. And then I find the pieces you need to put that together and help you solve that puzzle. I work for Thrive and Financial, where we view money as a tool and not a goal. And we do full financial planning and retirement, investments, college, uh, you name it, we probably do it. Rob Lord, Thriving Financial, Puzzle Excellent. Master. Puzzle Master, excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Thanks for being here. And uh, last but certainly not least, the lovely and talented <laughs> Trina Gigax. Good morning, Trina. Let's hear it. Good morning, guys. I did not know Rob was tall. Thank you, because he's always sitting down. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, um, six, six, four. Pardon? Well, he's six, 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 he four. says six four. I bet she's oh. more than that, but no, he's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. One day we'll meet in person again. Okay. My name's Trina Gigax. I'm a freelance copy editor and copywriter. Um, I work to take your writing or maybe someone else who hasn't written it so well and make it better so that it's much easier on the reader to digest and to get the message. 
I particularly would like to work on, I work on mostly business writing right now, but I really would like to continue working on anything with animals, particularly dogs and horses. Um, I, so if you have any kind of connection to anybody in the pet industry, could be someone who makes dog clothes. I mean, or uh, I, I recently visited a horse farm that's a therapeutic horse farm and I'm gonna be doing some work for them. So anybody in the animal industry would be appreciated. My company's Fresh Eyes Reading, Trina Giga. Excellent, thank you, Trina. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, next I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen and I'll do a little bit and uh, Chris will do a little bit and we'll move on and we'll talk about the importance of the follow-up call, follow-up email, follow-up text, uh, however it is you're going to follow up. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll put this where everybody can see it. Okay, the importance of follow-up. And what follows are the 10 major reasons describing the importance of follow-up with customers. Um, Chris has something to, uh, to add. Chris, would you like me to do these 10 and then give it to you? Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right, so here they are. Number one, customer expectations fulfilled, which provide them more reasons to get your product, the follow-up. Two, customers stick to your business for a longer period of time as you are always available. Number three, they remember you for the rest of their lives for delivering great customer service. As follow-up is the synonym for customer service, hence there's a high possibility that your brand spread among other people without you even knowing it. Easy marketing. Number five, follow-ups make customers feel special and therefore, this increases the reliability process for the customers. Number six, a regular follow-up always gives customers a chance to be heard and engage effectively. Number seven, follow-ups can be a great source to ask customers what they want, what they expect next. Number eight, customers usually want a medium to get in touch with the company. Therefore, the follow-up system enhances this communication. And number nine, a follow-up call is always required after conducting a marketing campaign to the people who call just to inquire. You might just get a lead. And last, existing customers receiving follow-ups are more likely to go for the new product than the ones without receiving follow-up calls. So it's always time to follow up. Following up is important. And how you do that, we're gonna talk more about the, uh, I'm gonna give you an example uh, as we get towards the end of this, of the email. So now, uh, Chris. At this point in time, um, I'm usually out on the road going to take a look at properties uh, probably three or four hours a day, maybe even five. Um, at the end of the day, when I finish uh, doing what, take a look at these properties, I always, within 24 hours, send these gentlemen a quote or call them and tell them I was there or text them and tell them I was there and I would will follow up with them. Um, this week, yesterday, I had seven referrals. When I got home at four o'clock, I started emailing these people. I got done about five thirty, six o'clock, and I'd already had six orders. So sit and think about it. Of seven places I looked at yesterday, I email I finished emailing them by six o'clock. By seven o'clock, I had five orders. Wow, fantastic. And each one of them thanked me for following up so quickly, and um, all of all of them, uh, and the other person just wanted some more information because I didn't give it to them. So, follow up. The follow up is the most important thing, and especially 
be sure you do it within 12 to 24 hours. You could text them. I text a lot of people because that's the way they want it. Yeah. Uh, I, I email them a quote. Uh, and then once the minute I email them the quote, I send them a text and tell them I emailed the quote. So, so I'm always following up with everybody. Yeah. Follow up is, is part of the process. I'm sure your pricing is attractive as well next to the other, the, the mainline wind vinyl window manufacturers. Isn't that, isn't that true? You're a better value. Right, exactly. But you got to remember, most of these people I have dealt with, and when I'm talking about referrals, a lot of these people I have dealt with their brothers, their sisters, uh, aunts and uncles. And also, most of the time, I'm not doing anything retail. This is strictly um, for a wholesale type business. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times I'm dealing with, with the person who's making the decisions right away. Yeah. Um, so... It seems to me that not only do you have the right price and you're also probably easy to get along with. And then you follow up, which they're interpreting that meaning you care about them and their job and their windows getting it right. And I think that combination is why you've been successful. Seems to me. Also in this COVID time, um, we're eight to 10 weeks out. And I tell them right in the email that, and most of them say, we don't care. We just want it done by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. They just want to get on the, uh, on the list, on, on the roll. Right. Yeah. Right. Very good. Okay. And I'll give you one of these, a, a few follow-up graphic examples, a bit dramatic, but they're effective. For example, this is good stuff. Um, in fact, I encourage you, to go to the YouTube channel, the Network Breakfast, and watch this video again and get those 10 that we started with and, and, uh, and how we're talking about this and explaining things. Listen to some of these, foresight. Follow-up questions from customers are anticipated in advance. Great reps think about ways to avoid similar issues in the future. I've heard Mike talk about his interaction with customers and most of the things on this particular list he has talked about, he because of all of us, he has a, a, a lot of um, uh, Medicare uh, customers that he needs to deal with. Quite a few. Uh, how, how many would that be, Mike? I currently have over 900. Wow. Oh and... You know, it can be daunting to try to keep up with them. So a couple of things that I shared last week, um, and I'll give you an example. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not at the beach with the ocean in the background today. I'm actually showing my office because I want to give you an example of what I do. So as soon as a person calls, I make... A folder. I don't want to reveal any HIPAA private information here. So sometimes while I'm talking on the phone, I grab and start to make a folder. And in the folder, and I'm sort of old school, I, I start to make notes. So for this person, they called me and I've, they called me on 423. And then 423 was actually a Friday. They called me a Friday afternoon. And so my policy is to return a call or an email within 24 business hours. I wasn't going to call them back on the weekend. So I put a note. Mike called them back on 426, which was yesterday. I then e emailed that person a follow-up on 426 and I also sent them a follow-up card. And I've got all these different follow-up cards. And this is the one I sent to them. Together, we will choose the right path. So I sent them this particular card. So I called them back. I followed up with an email. And I sent them a card. And then I've noted they responded back to me with an email a positive email on the 26th yesterday. So in one day, I made three points of contact.
Now, last week I was talking about my whiteboard. So as soon as someone calls me, they get their name put on, I don't know if you can see in the background here, my whiteboard. So that's my whiteboard. And some of them I have dates written by it, the month and the year, like 321, some were 1020. But these are every brand new, not an existing client that's aging in to, to Medicare and I've written them uh, some other product. These are brand new referrals to me. And guess what? Everyone that has a check mark, I've written. So uh, that's sort of my hit board in the background. Very good, Mike. And, and that way, and that way, when I'm sitting at my desk and I'm turning, I always see that board, which reminds me of who's out there that maybe I haven't closed or maybe who's out there I need to follow up with. And I even have names on there. I had, I had a lady call me yesterday. She was all worried because she turned 65 in February of 2022. And I had to respond to her and let her know that it's a little bit too early. All right. It's a little bit too early. We'll start to talk about your options in September. And so I put her on my board. I put a reminder in my computer on my calendar to do a follow up with her. And uh, Trina, didn't you get her card from me? Is Trina there? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. She she must be doing. Trina. Oh well, well. Um, enough, enough about me. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I, I got a call from a doctor. I'm sorry. What did you ask me something, Mike? I, I was just talking about when someone makes an inquiry to me. Um, my, sort of my process. Um, oh yeah, Mike was right on it. Called me back. We had a talk. He emailed did me. You, did you get Did you get the card from me? Yes, I did. Okay. I thought that was a very nice touch. Yeah. So usually within the first day, I'm making three contacts by phone, by email, and then by regular mail. Yes. And, and if anybody in our group here uh, typifies what's written here, we can, we can attribute all of these to Mike. For example, thoughtful tone. Emails and help articles are as concise as possible, but thorough. Every customer interaction is friendly and cooperative. Another one, funny bone. Humor puts customers at ease. People remember the names of the reps that let their personality come through. Helping hand. Customer service is a team sport. Great reps improve the knowledge base and train newcomers. Fast feet. Be proactive. Move towards the problem. When your customer has a problem, move towards it instead of trying to ignore it or hope it goes away. Great reps are quick to pick up a ringing phone, eager to pick up slack and show an ambitious streak. Mastermind, great reps exhaust all their resources to solve a problem, but they're mindful of others' time. Open ears. Customers will tell you what's wrong. Account managers know about prior issues and listen for cues. A kind heart. Empathy is critical. Contacting support is the last thing a customer will try before giving up. And an iron stomach. Confidence is key when offering recommendations and instructions to customers. It instills trust. And a thick skin. Customers may say things in the heat of frustration. Great reps, take it in stride. Excellent. Okay. Now... Here's one of the, the, the graphics we had from last week. It, this is stunning. 92% of salespeople, or in your case, whether it's a product or a service, 92% of salespeople give up on their leads after only four follow-up calls. Yet, 
50% of deals are closed after the fifth point of contact. So you, you, you maintain, you keep sending, you keep trying, and you'll make it. You'll get through, at least in this graphic, 50% of the time. Okay, how to write a follow-up email after a meeting. How to write a great follow-up email. This is good stuff. An effective follow-up email has three components. A thank you component, a common ground reference component, and a key takeaway component. And I'd like to know what Mike thinks of this when I'm done with this particular portion of it. We're going to walk through a three-step process to create a follow-up email with these three sections. Component one is the thank you. Saying thank you is usually a given in follow-up emails. So why even mention it? Simple, because gratitude is one of the most powerful ways to make a connection. That and because there are two ways of communicating thanks. One is just saying it. The other is meaning it. One is a standard phrase. The other is a bit more thoughtful. Think of it as the difference between what's up and how you doing today. You seem quite happy. Using sentences like, I really appreciated the time you spent with me today. I hope it was time well spent for you too. Let me start by saying thank you for your time today are a great place to start. If you can fortify these statements by adding specific reasons why you're thankful, that's even better. For example, I learned a lot from your suggestions today, or I feel I will be able to act upon the advice you offered. The key is to make sure your recipient perceives that you are genuine. Component number two, common ground reference. This component adds a sentence about what you enjoyed about the meeting and what you have in common with those you met with. It has three primary benefits. It personalizes the email so it doesn't look like you're just sending out a pre-written template. This will likely cause the other person to perceive you as caring, thoughtful, and attentive. People are attracted to positivity. By highlighting a positive element of the meeting, those you met with are likely to have a better opinion of you and think of the meeting as a success. Common ground is the source of all connection. And this component allows you to establish that common ground quickly. And third, key takeaways. This final component is your opportunity to show that you're committed to this relationship by going the extra mile. Use this section to sum up all commitments given and received. This will underscore the productivity of the meeting and create confidence that you are going to follow through. In addition, this component also creates an informal agreement that the other party will follow through as well. Isn't that something? So now we'd like some comments and, and, uh, and a little more uh, background, if you have any. Mike? Uh, I've got something for you. I just got a telephone call from one of my customers, uh, and he's referring me to somebody else and wants me to come out to uh, Wellington on Thursday or Friday to meet with them. Yeah. And no doubt they'll probably buy the windows and doors from you. Absolutely. Isn't that something? Um, the, question, the question is, and, and I know Mike does a fabulous job of it, and I, and I, I learn a lot of stuff from Mike. Yes, um, me too. But I will tell you that uh, I'm going to use the whiteboard. In fact, I'm going out to uh, and get one. <laughs> uh, I think that's the smartest of all the stuff that I've learned. That's one of the things uh, because I even have stuff fall through the crack. And um, I don't like that. And so if when somebody calls you and say, hey, did you did you send this or did you send that? Uh, you go, oh, boy, what did I do? Yeah, I want to. I want to show. I want to show. I want to show you guys something. I um, I have another follower. I'm in Bridget's office, and look what she has behind her. 
<laughs> she yeah. now is using a whiteboard as well. Good. Yeah, I think when you look at something visually, you can't get away from it. So that's even you know, you've got notes and notebooks and maybe something's on your phone or an email, but when you're when it's right there staring at you, I think you're less likely to forget about it. Uh, hey, Mike, in, in using the whiteboard, um, what's the layout of the whiteboard? You have, a, you have the name there, certainly, and, and maybe a date. Uh, do you mention if it's a phone call, email, text? Uh, no, no, because all everything on the whiteboard is also in the folder. All right, so I have like two separate. So if I don't end up helping someone or it gets sidetracked and they decide they're not going to retire yet, I don't get rid of the folder. I put it in a separate stack. And I'll tell you someone who's great at following up. I mentioned him last week who used to attend, Doug Bunker. I'm one of Doug's clients. Doug calls me three, four times a year, calls me on my birthday, sends cards every holiday. Uh, he's incredible. Now, I just can't call over 900 people. I mean, it'd be virtually impossible. And I've taken a different approach where I don't send cards for the typical uh, times of year. You know, I don't send holiday cards, birthday cards, graduation cards, any of that. I send cards, um, and it's interesting, some of you will say, well, you never receive them from me. That uh, many of you are my clients, and this is something, I, I don't want to offend someone who does mass mailing or printing in our group, And uh, but I have a co-op with a company that an insurance company that basically pays my costs. These are very inexpensive. So my dad is my theme. So you might remember some of these cards. This is a people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care card. This is another one I do with dad. Um, this is one of my latest one. Um, it seems like yesterday that we last talked so if I had someone that I spoke to a year ago and they haven't quite made a decision, I'll send them out that card. Seems like yesterday that we last talked and every single card that I send out, I hand address and I write something personal on it. And um, so I, I sort of have a, a stock um, section of things that I'll write in the card. Um, so my dad has sort of been a theme. Dad is going strong at 94. Wow. And my clients who get the cards, um, they will commonly, especially the 85, 86 year old widows, they always want to know how dad's doing. You know, how's dad? So I do a lot of cards that I mail out and if I find out that one of my clients um, has had a death of a spouse or a loved one, I had customized sympathy cards made up. And so I will send out a sympathy card. So I'm a send out cards guy, but I design my own and it's very inexpensive. Uh, Shutterfly, uh, you know, I can get 500 custom made cards and I get and I get a stipend from a company that reimburses me for the cost but I could get 500 cards customized color for usually under 60 bucks it's crazy mm, that is and uh, wow. so my ma my major cost is just putting a stamp on it because if I get a larger card like this it's full postage it's not postcard my, my staff made the uh, mistake uh, a year ago. I had the larger cards and they sent them out with uh, postcard postage. Some of them went through, some of them were returned. And then I had clients calling me or customers calling me because they had postage due. <laughs> well, at least they're calling you. Uh-huh. So 500 cards 
plus postage for 60 bucks plus 275 bucks in postage. Yeah, yeah. 335, all right. Good deal. I, Good deal. I have a comment on that. This isn't about the follow up, but it, um, once you follow up, and the, the, I'll tell you the little meeting I had yesterday and why I started out the meeting angry <laughs> because we had a four o'clock and instead of it was 410 and I'm sitting there. This is the first meeting after he followed up and agreed to come meet with me. He, so he's 10 minutes late. And when he called, he didn't apologize to, to say that he was late. He called to ask if I wanted uh, a blueberry muffin when he came. And then got to the house and still did not apologize for being late. So my thing is, if you know you're going to be late, so at four o'clock, he knew he was late. You call at 10 too and say, I'm running late. But to, to get here and not even apologize on your first meeting. So to me, that's all part of the follow up. You know, we made the call, we made the meeting, and you got there. It doesn't end there. You still have to be polite enough to say, I'm sorry I'm late, or explain why you were late. Um, so I think that's a, that's another part of it. It's not really a follow up, but if something's going wrong, I think you need to explain and give somebody the courtesy of, of a, a call ahead of time why you're going to be late. Because that just set me off. I could barely relax for the first 10 minutes because I was so ticked off that he didn't even apologize for being late. Trina, if that meeting was not that important, it, it sounds like, and this is just coming from, from somebody who's on the road all the time, and I do, I, a lot of times I'm, I'm, there's nobody at the house, so I, I, they don't worry about me. Uh, but I tell them uh, what time I'm going to be there and I'll call them if I'm going to be late. If that person hadn't called and walked in my house, uh, I wouldn't even let them in. I would just say, I don't need your, I don't need your business, goodbye. Well, this wasn't- We were doing follow up today. Yeah, who, who was the customer, you or the person that was late? Right. Well, oh, me or Chris? Uh, Trina. I was the patient advocate for the person who was looking for um, sure, patient like care. From a distance, I showed him. So oh, yeah. like, he didn't yeah. apologize to her, nor did yeah, he I apologize did. to me, and I was the one that set up the meeting. And if we didn't need the meeting so desperately, I would have just said, been honest and said, you know, I, I'm sorry, but you're, you're late and you didn't even explain why you're late. Right, she, right. I texted at 10 after and said, well, how late are you going to be? And then when, then when he got there, my friend said, you're late. I mean, she's very direct. And it, it was only then that he explained why he was late. So I just felt like we shouldn't have had to do the work of prompting him about why he was late. Correct. So, so it just put the beginning of the meeting off on the wrong tone is, is my whole point. And it changed my impression of this person from the very beginning. And that's not how you want to start out in your business. Um, did you clear it up with this person or? Yeah. So everything is okay now? Okay. I see Mike, uh, Mike has a guest. <laughs> Mike, you got your mic off. Good go. morning. How Good is morning. everyone doing? Hi, Bridget. Hi. Good morning, Bridget. Welcome back, Bridget. Thank you. How are you guys? Has everyone been staying healthy and safe? Yeah. yeah. We took Absolutely. a tour of your office and your whiteboard. Yes, I know. I've been taking, I follow after my mentor. <laughs> so... Yeah, follow-ups. We um, he taught me to. I actually keep them also in Excel spreadsheet, and I share them with my uh, account manager. And every day we go through it together on updates from her end, updates on my end, so we're all on the same page. Um, because I'm sure you guys have already talked about it. How I think the average touch a normal salesperson does is one to two touches when you should be having over five touches at least. That's so, what this was all about. Yeah. So That's what this is you know, all about. however many. <laughs> Yeah, and for us, it's however, 
for me personally, it's however many unique touches you have. Um, because in my opinion, I feel like cold calling majority of the time is dead. So it's how many unique touches between email, sending them maybe something marketing wise, you know, giving them a call saying, hey, something's in the mail, be on the lookout or hey, I'm about to email you something, you know, up until that. And usually that will always do the trick, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. Now, what about after you sign a client, do you have a, a process for onboarding? Yeah, I always send a thank you card. Mm-hmm. Um, I always send a thank you card. Um, I also send, we also send their policies in the mail. So that's a second time that I'll reach out. And then usually I'll reach out again down the line just to see how everything's going and if they need anything. So okay. just to make sure that they know that I, their priority, even after they become a client. So. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm implementing a uh, onboarding process where, you know, a thank you letter, and then because I'm in finance, a lot of times we're transferring funds and sometimes you get hiccups along the way. Um, but another point of contact, hey, your accounts are open. Hey, um, we just got your money transferred over just so they can not have to keep checking. Just little points of contact along the way. But, you know, as you get more clients, it gets harder to do without, you know. Yeah. I have my first assistant now to help me, so. Yeah, and that, that communication with your assistant is important. We have our yeah. account managers that help us service our books and making sure you're on the same page with them. Um, that's why I have that Google Doc with my um, uh, with my account manager so we can always stay in touch with, mm-hmm. with what, on her end, what she needs to do or on my end, you know, maybe where, what's going on with the client and, you know, so on right. and so forth. Is, you know, the, at the end of the day, the number one, um, the most important important person in your business is your client. So, you know, yeah. in order to make sure you have that internal communication strong with your assistant or account manager, and then also making sure you do keep up with those points, whether it's either or, you know, just checking in saying, how are you doing? You know, that'll, that'll keep them, you know, around and, you know, because right. I feel like customer service is almost dead these days. So keeping that human touch and showing them that you care will really speak volumes and create more referrals down the line. Yeah. My biggest issue now is the younger clients where email and phone calls, they don't care for. Um, So they like texting. They'll respond to that. But (laughs) in the finance world, we're very limited to what we can text. Yeah. So it it puts us in our hard position to, to do that. With, you know. I mean, with the millennial generation, I mean, it's not that they don't want to talk on the phone or they don't want to email. Um, emailing, we just get so inundated with emails. So, yeah. I mean, but still, I mean, if they want, if they're going to pay attention, they will. But our generation is very big. It's not that we don't want to talk. It's that we're big on efficiency because mm-hmm. we grew up with so many different, you know, outlets in terms of social media, email, phone. We have so many ways of communication and we get so inundated. So that's why we're very big on um, efficiency in terms of communicating. It's not necessarily that we don't want to talk. Um, there's that, but then also our my generation's very big on um, what is it? My very my generation's very big on when they learn something, they want it's that's they want it to be an experience and they want to be educated throughout. At least majority of them are, um, and those are the clients that you're going to want. So I mean, yeah. I think if you're keeping in touch with them saying like, Hey, like this is this, and this is why, because millennials look at it as an experience. Everything we look at as an experience, it's exhausting, <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, they always look at it as a way to learn. And, um, you know, and then, and then on top of that, um, going back to the customer service aspect, we hate 1-800 numbers just as much as everybody else. Um, we, I mean, I know, I know majority of my younger clients, um, they love that they can just email me or text me and say, Hey, um, you know, I, I'm moving. Can you change this to my policy versus them having to go into the app or having them to call in? They really appreciate that. So yeah. it's just a matter of showing them the convenience and the efficiency of going through you. And then also, you know, giving them that information and that education along the way. Um, it's just, you really have to tell them in the beginning to, cause whenever I tell, like, for example, with independent agents, my generation has no idea what we are. They just think of, you know, you can go on an app and you can click in and then look at all the rates and the limits. Whereas when I tell them, Hey, we do that all for you. 
they they come through they go through us before they go through anything else because they prefer human con- contact they trust more humans so yeah i'm learning that <laughs> yeah if you ever have any questions let me know i i did a lot okay. of research on my generation since that's obviously who i'll you know down the line <laughs> will be the the vast majority <laughs> Bridget, that would be a that would be a wonderful uh, topic to uh, present to the group because yeah, a lot of us don't to. deal with millennials. <laughs> we, we just kind of pass them by and uh, go for the you know the people that we that we're used to. Yeah, I'll definitely. Yeah, I can. I'm more than happy to. Tom, if you want to email me, we can you know set up a time, and you know I'm more than happy to talk, speak with everyone, and answer any questions. So okay, uh, I'll follow up with that. <laughs> boom. Tom's looking for I love content. what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Of course, we're thanking you for your kind attention and your uh, participation in that. We're going to stop. Yeah. Okay. How many people uh, here use Zoom for meetings and stuff on a regular basis? No, I don't. Do we all know how to use Zoom? What's Pretty Zoom? Much? Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. In breakout rooms and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to do breakout rooms because me neither. I I'm gonna the, learn. I use the free account. I think you have to have a paid account to do that. Yeah, I, I do have a paid account. Yeah, I. In fact, my paid account just renewed. It's been one year since I had my hosting account. So wow. we, we could do that. We did a um, a Zoom hosting uh, video. Uh, on the network breakfast channel, but it didn't cover what Rob was just mentioning, a breakout and all of that. So maybe we'll do one of those. Yeah. We'll and then, show the, the features that are available and uh, we'll present them here so that everybody will know how to use Zoom as well as uh, as can be expected. Yeah. Well, would, one, be one, of, yeah would, one of the reasons why I'm asking, Tom, is every time we come to network breakfast, it's a different login. for some reason, instead of just a standard, like this is Tom's room um, with a, the same number and then the same passcode. I, I don't know if that's in your settings. Well, uh, I figured that being that I send out a email blast on Mondays. Right. I, I just figured it's just easier just to send it and you click on it and get in. Okay. Yep. Um, I think it would be easier to have the same one and I put it as a repeating event in my calendar with the same link each week. Yeah. One of the tricks I learned is you could create your own room number too. So I use my office phone number hmm. as my room number. Just... I'm going to start using your office phone number too now. <laughs> <laughs> then I require a passcode. That's secret. Okay. Well, in any case, for the YouTubers out there, we're going to uh, wrap up the follow-up too. And uh, but our participants, our contestants here for today, we can continue talking. But I'm going to uh, uh, stop for our YouTubers out there. So thanks very much for watching, all, all, watching all the way to the end. This was a good one. Watch it again if you can. Uh, there's a lot of good information in this. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we can stick around and talk some more after we stop recording and I'll do that right now. Thank you. Bye.